Hello, I am back. It's Junebug. Remember, this is true crime time, like every couple of months. I would apologize being, um, like, sorry it's late, but no one's waiting for these, so why apologize? Anyway, today I mentioned in my last true crime that I started research for this next video and that it actually was close to me and not like in my heart. Although it's kind of weaseled its way in there, but I don't like know anyone in this case or anything like that. But it takes place here in Michigan. And like, yeah, there's a 1 in 50 chance of that in the United States. But it's actually like location wise close. And I actually did, like I said, go to the site. It's about 45, 50 minutes away from here. And don't worry, it's not like a current uh, case. So it's not like I was in danger or intruding. It was, it's a memorial site, which I will include that clip in here. Genesis helped me and then Panda was along for the day. <laughs> the dog, the dog's name is Panda. We didn't have a panda with us. That'd be cool though. So, being from Michigan and living so close to this, I was very disappointed, one in myself, but two, for someone not telling me this. Like I get it's not modern, but we learn about a ton of other things that are older than this. And this is the Bath School Massacre. Yes, it's Bath Township. Because if you look at Bath Bombing, you're going to get different things. You're not going to get this. But this, the Bath School Massacre, or Bath School Disaster, yeah, the whole massacre, it's intense to say, is actually the number one deadliest school massacre in U.S. history. I don't want to say hopefully it stays that way. Hopefully there's nothing more intense. That's what I'm trying to say. Let's just stop shooting kids. But it doesn't show up for certain reasons we'll get into later in the video. Like when you Google like worst school shootings. It's not going to pop up. But this is the number one worst school massacre in the United States. And ninth in the entire world. It cracks the top 10, but it's still sad that there's eight more worse than this, but just, we're not talking about those today. I don't got the heart for that. So this, this Bath School Massacre took place on, in Bath Township in Michigan here in Clinton County, and it took place on May 18th, 1927. So it just had its 94th anniversary a couple months ago when I like started this research. Oh, that's sad. Oh, I was slow. Oh, well. So the ages, there's fortunately multiple victims. So you're not expecting the worst school massacre in the United States. Everyone was between the ages of like 7 and 74. It's a wide variety. And I guess as always, the silver lining is this is a solved case. Which, it's better than unsolved. Because there's sort of just You'll see, you'll see. So this took place in Bath Township, which is only about 45 minutes from here, as I mentioned. And we'll, I'll show the clips towards the end of the video of me and Genesis, like, visiting the memorial site. And we're going to start this story with Andrew Cahill? Cahill? I assume it's pronounced Cahill. I go back and forth between just saying Andrew, Andrew Cahill, and just Cahill. Mainly I'll be calling him Andrew. He was born in Tecumseh, Michigan, which is closer to the Ohio border because I wanted to look it up because I'm a Michigander. And he was born on February 1st of 1872, which seems crazy to me, to a family of 13 kids. 13. He, remember, born in 1872, so he would later study in his life electrical engineering, which is, which sounds really impressive now, basically an electrician, which is still a good job. But back then, when electricity wasn't, like, just everywhere, 
he was the shit. And he thought he was the shit. So he actually studied electrical engineering at MSU, for not those of you not in Michigan, which is Michigan State University. And then moved to St. Louis, St. Louis, Malaga, Missouri. Because there is a St. Louis here in Michigan, but that's not where he went. He went to Missouri. And he worked as an electrician for several years. I don't know how busy he was with the electrical stuff back then, but that doesn't matter. And sometime during this, doing one of his electrician jobs, he fell. Pretty severe fall. And he suffered a head injury, which we know can be quite common with people who are not the bestest, to put it at the least. And he was actually in a coma for many weeks, which I'm kind of impressed that he came out of a coma at this time period. I'm not like a big expert on the medical, the medicals at this time, but I feel like coming out of a coma back then, not common. So I guess that is impressive. I could be totally wrong. But after he recovered, he did move back to Michigan, as you could assume, because this took place, takes place in Michigan, and he settled on his dad's farm. So at the age of 40, in which was 1912, he married Ellen Ornelli Price, and seven years later, I don't know what took so long to move to their own farm, but they moved to a farm outside of Bath, Bath County, no Bath Township and Clinton County. Oh, so at this time he, Andrew, was said to be dependable, doing favors and volunteer work for his neighbors. Sounds like a decent guy, just maybe with a bump on his head. But he was also described as very impatient, impatient with any disagreement. So if you didn't agree with him, he was just bah. Basically, we know those people. Doesn't necessarily mean they're evil. But he shot and killed, for example, a neighbor's dog who got on his property and barked. I don't know about you, I've had dogs just wander in my yard. I don't shoot them. It seems like a bit of an extreme reaction, um, personally. But I, maybe you could say it was feral in his defense back then. He beat one of his horses to death when it didn't meet his expectations as another example of his aggression. I've never had a horse, but I feel like that's not what you do. That's not what you do. Um, I don't know what it wasn't meeting. Not grades in school, obviously. It's a horse. I don't know if it was getting old or something and it couldn't work like it used to. I don't know. I just feel like that was not the right answer. And holy crap, if he was doing it with his fist or just with the little whip stick thing. Strong guy. Holy crap. Or it was a weak horse. I don't know. But Andrew was also like, he was like famous before all this stuff went down for being very frugal and cheap. And, like, he's Mr. Krabs from Spongebob on steroids. Like, Mr. Krabs was an evil guy that's just shooting dogs and beating horses to death. So he was very frugal and cheap. So in 1924, he was elected as a trustee for the school board. Like, keeping in charge of the money and stuff like that. He did that for three years and was treasurer for one year, which treasurers usually are in charge of the money and stuff like that. So I'm guessing not a lot of funding was channeled to the school at the time. But he was considered on the trustees board and with, when he was treasurer to be very difficult to work with. I, I'm not surprised. And he would often vote against the rest of the board. I don't know if he just generally didn't agree with any of their stuff or if he just did it out of spite. Part of me thinks it could be both. Why not both? But he, as I said, very cheap. Mr. Krabs on steroids. He hated taxes. You don't understand how much this man hated taxes. Didn't mean for that to rhyme, but eh. Hated them. Like, they were like the bane of his existence. So in 1925,
So he would argue with financial authorities because someone voted him onto the board of trustees and stated he paid way too much in taxes and tried to get the value of his property reduced <laughs> so he could pay less taxes. Normally that's not what people do. They want higher value in property so when they sell it they can get more money. He's like, I live on shit land. This is only worth like a dollar in taxes that I put aside. Guys, what do you agree? Don't you agree? That's probably how he went about it. Opposite of <laughs> what people tend to do nowadays. But he wasn't looking to sell anyway so I guess kind of see what he was going for, but still, taxes are just, well for us, just a way of life. I don't know when taxes came into play. I should look that up. So in 1926, his uncle's widow, who held the mortgage, she like put the mortgage down or bought the property for them, and for closure proceedings because they couldn't afford it. They didn't, weren't even the ones to purchase it. I think he helped a little bit with some, like a down payment, but I can't, he, he was struggling. And so Andrew around this time was reported to have said, quote, if, I, if it hadn't been for that $300 school tax, I might have paid off this mortgage, end quote. Also, quote, if I can't live in that house, no one else will." End quote. First quote, bitter man, just hates taxes, bitter the government. Second quote, got bitter in chance. So in 1925, Cahoe, or Andrew, was temporarily appointed to fill the position of town clerk. I don't know who chose him. Again, I don't know who's picking him for these things. I guess Bath Township is small, so it was a limited number of people, and he was technically like an electrical engineer if they just like that. Because it showed he, he was smart, definitely. Just a very angry man. So when he, he was town clerk for about a year, and when he tried to keep his position, he lost in the April 1926 election. And this pissed him off. Like, holy crap very mad he's not on like any boards or anything right now he's not like in any position of power which that can make him mad like not having power he seems like a guy who would like to have power around this time a neighbor of his know that andrew had stopped working on his farm just like all together which is weird considering he doesn't have another job and he had to cut all of his wire fences like Andrew had cut his wire fences, his own wire fences, not the neighbor's wire fences, and was killing his young shade trees, so trees for shade, and he cut up his grapevine plants, which is the opposite of normally what farmers would do, and he put like just tons and tons of crap in his tool shed before just destroying it. So the neighbor, I don't know how long this neighbor was watching him for, or if Andrew just did not care and just doing what he pleased. Let's be honest, he is doing what he pleased. But this is not normal, very angry. You could think, well, he's just angry. He's taking it out on his farm. I guess his loss only, I guess, and Nellie's. Which, another thing, how did him and Nellie get together? She sounds like a lovely lady. What happened? What happened? This isn't, what? Anyway, dealing with Nellie, the wife, lovely wife. I don't know, maybe she was angry too. I didn't see much about her. She had become chronically ill with tuberculosis, but they assumed it was tuberculosis at the time. Remember, that was a big, deadly thing back then. No cure. They don't really know what it is yet. And, well, it's, it still sucks today, but you get what I'm saying. And, like I said, no cure at the time, so she was in and out of hospitals. So this could have contributed to his cheapness as well, and the fact that having money, because no matter what time period you really are in, in American history, medical stuff is expensive. So M.W. Keys, 
a board member for the school, stated Andrew was employed the past November to fix the school's lighting system. Because remember, he's an electrician, so he was hired to do that. So like, okay, you lost everything. How about you do your actual job and do electrician stuff? Away from people. So he, he did. But unfortunately, as you could have suspected by now, Andrew is the one that is the bad guy in this story. So it was most likely during this time that he they think he planted the bombs. So this is why this isn't, when you look up where school shootings in American history, why this isn't brought up. Because it wasn't done by guns. This was done solely by bombs. And we'll get more to that in a minute. So around this time, he was the electrician, and looking back at it now, they thought this was when he most likely planted the bombs in the school when he was fixing their lighting. So he bought a ton of pyrotol, 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 and dynamite at sporting goods stores, which seems crazy now, but back then, this stuff was frequently used by farmers for, like, excavating land and burning debris. So, it's not as crazy if you see a guy a farmer buying dynamite back then, but he, he was probably buying a lot. Actually, no, I know he was buying a lot. Well, that's why no one was really suspicious. You know, like, he's a farmer, he's probably excavating, he's getting rid of some debris, maybe a, a horse he died and he's just gonna burn, cremate it. So prior to May 18th of, remember, 1927, he started filling his truck with metal debris to make shrapnel. Like it's just jam-packed in his, like, the back seat of his truck, it's in his passenger side. Like, he's just shoving all the shrapnel in there. And so around this time when he's an electrician at the school, one, a neighbor by the school, Idaho, he saw him going multiple times to the school at night. Or someone. She didn't know it was particularly him, but she never reported it, because other family members in the house were like, maybe it's Andrew Cahill just fixing the lighting when people aren't there. Or maybe it's school, uh, just a school board member, like they forgot something, they forgot another thing, or maybe it's different people, like, don't be too alarmed. The children are there right now, so it, it's okay. So it wasn't reported. So on May 16th, Nellie, the wife, was discharged from the hospital for, I don't know how many times this was, and for her tuberculosis, what they assumed. She didn't go home. She was still feeling obviously sick and worn down. Remember, there was no cure back then. But she, she, she was doing it. She could leave the hospital. But when she got home, she was killed. She got home from the hospital and Andrew killed her. He killed his wife. They don't know when exactly, but it was between the 16th when she was released from the hospital and the 18th when they discovered her body. She was left in a wheelbarrow at the rear of the farm's chicken coop. So the 18th, remember, is, he said at the beginning, is the day of the disaster. Everything has been leading up to, it, to this. He's angry, hates taxes, he's destroying his farm. He's about to lose the farm anyway. He's so... The day of May 18th, at 8.45 a.m. on Wednesday, May 18th, Andrew detonated the bombs in his house. Because he also blew up his house. And the farm buildings, like, adjacent to the house were also detonated. And this is where debris would land on the neighbor's land and cause them to notice fire and rush to the scene of the house because he detonated the house. And mind you, Nellie's body is still in a wheelbarrow towards the back of the property. So Andrew was not in the house when it detonated. He was in his truck, and he left the burning property in his Ford truck, by the way. Very Michigan. <laughs> and he told the people fighting the fire, because people were like, ah, fire, that they should get to the school. And then he just sped off. If that ain't sinister and evil, I don't know what is. So classes at Bath Consolidated School, that's what the school was called, because it was just the one school in the township, grades K through 12, all in one building. So classes had begun at 8.30 a.m. 
and 15 minutes later at 8.45 a.m., the many explosives under the north wing of the school detonated, leaving the school looking like a war zone. And this wasn't just like a one floor school building, it had multiple floors, but it was just one building for K through 12. A first grade teacher, Bernice Sterling, told a reporter that it was like an earthquake. Quote, the air seemed to be full of children and flying debris and books. Children were tossed in the air, some were catapulted out of the building, end quote. It's just brutal. An eyewitness, Robert Gates, said mothers were running into the schoolyard demanding info about their children. Because it is a small area, people could obviously see that half the school just blew up and was crumbling to the ground, looks like a war zone, and the mothers were rushing to fig figure out what happened to their children. Many would see, unfortunately, a lifeless figure on the ground and then start scream sobbing when they realized it was their own baby, their own child. So they sometimes didn't even get to ask, what happened, where's my child? They would just see their child, unfortunately, lifeless on the grass. And as word spread or they saw the incident, over 100 men and women were tearing apart what remained of the North Wing trying to find the children or any survivors. Another eyewitness, Ellsworth, recounted seeing a Mrs. Hart with a little dead girl on each side of her and a little dead boy in her arms. And she was just like staring into the distance, like deadpan. I couldn't remember if these were all her children. I think they were, unfortunately. She lost all three of her children. So the north wing had collapsed so much that the edge of the roof was on the ground. And about a half hour later, Andrew went up to the school, the little shithead, got out of his truck and summoned the superintendent over to him, he stated that they fought over a long gun before Andrew detonated the dynamite in his truck, remember that he had filled with shrapnel, and immediately killed Andrew. The superintendent who was trying to get the gun away from him and a local retired farmer and unfortunately an eight-year-old boy who had just crawled out from surviving the blast the explosion also caused damage to cars half a block away by catching their roofs on fire it injured so many and had blown off a postmaster's leg he died before reaching the hospital unfortunately probably from blood loss and shock. Many, so many people were called. Firefighters arrived, a drugstore was turned into a triage center. The town hall was being used as a morgue for all the dead bodies from the detonation. Hundreds of people worked in the wreckage all day and night trying to find any children or teachers pinned underneath the wreckage, not just survivors, the bodies as well. So during the search for children and teachers, anybody, they found in the south side of the wing 500 pounds of dynamite that had failed to explode. This was supposed to go off at the same time as the other ones, but fortunately they did not. So they had to take a step back from their searching, a police search the now destroyed home to see if there's any more dynamite elsewhere. They're also searching the destroyed Keho farm and they found Nellie's remains in the wheelbarrow but they also found the horse's remains because he just pure evil. Everything he's done so far has been pure evil but this is what was the point? He had tied his horse's legs together and burned down their barn. So they couldn't escape. I could maybe understand like people can talk so they're a witness but the horses aren't gonna tell anybody. I just all this is horrible he's done. But they also found a sign made by Andrew himself that said quote criminals are made not born end quote. 
so uh, I guess we know his stance on that. And he, he rests it, blames Haxons for him being turned into a monster. <laughs> That's his main reason. People rejecting him and then those taxes. I feel like not a legit excuse, personally. Just my opinion. So the Red Cross eventually did arrive to help and would help raise $5,284, which is worth about $78,726 in today's terms for medical bills and funerals. The disaster received national coverage and shared headlines with Charles Lindbergh's transatlantic flight. We learned about that in school. And to know that this happened the exact same time and shared newspapers with them and they didn't tell us, especially here in Michigan, the audacity. Side note, why don't they talk about school shootings in school? Is it because they're afraid that the kids will be scared because they're currently at school or because they just shield us from everything else that's bad in history and stuff. What do you think? Anyway, in these newspapers across the nation, Andrew was described as a maniac, a madman, and a fiend. Yeah, I would say he's all those things. I just think he's the devil, personally. Just pure evil. And people around the world knew about this at the time. They expressed sympathy for the victim's families, people's injuries, and Italian school kids wrote letters to the families. And one even said, quote, even if we are small, we understand all the sorrow and misfortune that has struck our dear brothers, end quote. Cahill's body was claimed eventually by one of his sisters. He placed him in an unmarked grave in the paupers section of a cemetery in St. John's, Michigan. Which, I did not visit that. He does not deserve a visit, personally, and obviously I don't know which one it is. So it sounded like, obviously, they were not a fan of his actions and they just wanted to be done with him. Nellie's family did obviously claim her and they buried her in the Lansing Cemetery with her maiden name, which was Price. Which, good. Personally, if it was me, and I could see my family, like, you better put the maiden name. So the rest of the dead, which was a lot, were all buried by the following Monday, which I feel like is pretty fast. But people weren't as scared of, like, dead bodies and death as they are now, back then. And also just closure. So a jury decided no one else at the school was in on this and they were not at fault or charged with criminal negligence, which basically was someone could be charged if they noticed Andrew like carrying multiple packages into the school but didn't like question him about it or just let it slide like, eh, it's probably electrical stuff. There was, he did it very sneakily, there was nothing anyone really could have done, especially in this time period. Nowadays, yes, with security cameras and all that, thing, they, people could have been charged with criminal negligence nowadays. But back then, it, there's no security cameras, he's doing his work early in the morning at night before kids are there. People knew he was an angry man at Texas, but they didn't think this when they thought of what he was capable of. of capable of. And on the school's board of trustees. That's horrible. Just do some background checks on your trustees. So three months after the bombing, the final victim passed from her injuries. A young girl making the death toll 45. 45 children, mainly children, and a couple teachers lost their lives that day. 45 out of a school of back then probably a hundred something it was about half the students. I could be totally wrong but just basing it off of the size of the township the one school and back then that was probably half of the student population. 45 
there is another child, I think he died a year later or three years later. He's not considered a, um, death toll number in this. I don't know how to put it as an official number in it because it was three years later, but they believe that his heart inflammation, like his heart infection, I, myocarditis, mitocarditis, I think y'all know what I'm trying to say. Something with his heart from an infection with the bombing and just everything that went wrong with him did cause him to pass away. But I do not, he is not counted in the death total. So I personally think he should be. So 46. We'll get on to the aftermath. So believe it or not, school resumed on September 5th of 1927 and was held in the community hall, the town hall, now that was not being used as a morgue, and two retail buildings because obviously the school was gone. And most of the surviving students actually returned. I thought a lot of them would be homeschool or they just move, but most of them returned. Probably out of lack of options, but still. So on September 15th, Michigan's U.S. Senator James J. Cousins, yes, I looked up how to pronounce his name, he said it's just like Cousins, presented his personal check for $75,000, which nowadays is $1,117,385 about. A lot to help build a new school, which I think is wonderful. Wish more senators could be like that. But I feel like I should know he's also from Canada. If that has anything to do with it. They tore down the remains completely of the old school, the one that's like half detonated. And they found dynamite three more times that had not been detonated. And not just in the south wing. There was three other locations of like tons of dynamite that failed to explode that day. I don't, mm. so and they start a new construction once all the dynamite was gone and the remains of the school were gone as well. So the Cahill farm, Andrew's farm, Andrew and, Andrew and Nellie's farm was plowed to check for even more explosives and it was sold at auction to pay the mortgage. Comes full circle. Did all this because of taxes and he couldn't pay the mortgage. And they sold the land to pay that mortgage. They could have just done that in the first place. But now, have to kill about half the school. So in 1975, the new Cousins School was demolished. It was around for many, many years. But it was demolished. I don't know what exactly for. Probably because Bath Township is bigger now when we visited it. They have like elementary school, middle school, high school, they obviously outgrew it, and it was known as an agricultural school, and kids could do a bit more than just be farmers nowadays, so, and it could have had like electrical problems, we don't know, but it was demolished and turned into a memorial park for the victims, which is what me and Genesis visited. And which you will see now. Hi, people. So, Panda's here. Panda, look at <laughs> Genesis is here as well. He just is. Show yourself. No. Genesis, what is wrong with you? <laughs> so, as so to promise, so I'll tend of you. We are at the memorial for the Bath Bomb School Massacre. Whenever you type bath bomb to like search for it, it's always like the sudsy ones. I have to put massacre to really get it across. And it's not a fun time. But there's not really a parking lot and it's actually a very cute little town. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I didn't think to look up where the old farm used to be, but by the looks of it, it's not anywhere. Or it's someone else's farmland or home now. Probably. Why are you so disgusted right now? It's your video. I'm keeping out of it. No. Join.
comment below if you want to <laughs> But we can show you some of the sights and we're gonna obviously, I almost said water panda, she needs some water, but she will go for a little bit of a walk. And hopefully we don't get a ticket for being parked here because it's, it's the only spot to park. It's just like dirt on the side of the road. Yeah. But we'll see the memorial. Oh, it's going? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't hear the beep. <laughs> so here we are in the memorial. I feel unnatural because this is my first time doing this. But this was, I don't know if this is actually part of the old school, the cupola, or they just made a representation of it. Of the old school, apparently it used to stand here. It's gone now, obviously. But now they have like three schools, I think. Like elementary school, middle school, and a high school. Shoot to panda. Cheerfulness in the... Here, is that also there? There's a dog. Um, <laughs> But in the bricks, you can see the names of some of the people who perished. I'm trying to find one that's pretty clear. Yeah, that's... Maybe over here. The heart part. It's kind of hard to tell. Did you want to come this way and we can get a big view? Sure. So this possibly sat atop the school, or this is just a representation of what was on the school. So there's that, but then also over here we have the little dedication. Capula? Capula? Capula. That way y'all can maybe pause and read it if you want to. And then this is the plaque for them. And then over here we have the actual memorial rock about the disaster. Yeah, I'll put it up so y'all can pause it. And then here's the stone of all the people they lost. It's so sad. It's really weird being here where this actually took place. But it was 94 years ago, so we are safe at the moment. So this is the site. There they go, they're leaving. <laughs> so as you can see, we visited the memorial. There's also a section dedicated to veterans as well, but I didn't really focus on that part. Yes, they're lovely. But we came here focusing on the bath bomb massacre. But there actually was a 2011 documentary Nothing big, it's not like on Netflix, it's not a little docu-series or anything. And was released with interviews from the survivors. The survivors are very old now, um, but they were there. They were the children that survived. They were the children that saw their classmates die in front of them and some of their teachers. They saw this happen. Just... I'm not quite sure where to find the documentary or I might be intrigued in watching it. But if you can find it and watch it, let me know. But that, unfortunately, is the case of the Bath School disaster. The Bath School bombing, Bath School disaster, massacre, many names. And, and unfortunately, it's still the same sad fate. So, if you're from Michigan and you hadn't heard of this either, it makes me feel slightly better. But I just feel like, as a Michigander and someone who lives very close to the site, I should know this happened. Especially if I had to sit through Lucky Wendy's slow theme song when this happened at the same time, like an hour down the road. I should know about this. I feel like I should have learned. You should have learned. So that is the case, and obviously they could not bring Andrew to trial because he um died. <laughs> he killed himself along with 45 other people. But yes, this is the worst U.S. school massacre in our history, ninth in the world. Just think about this is ninth and nearly 50 children and teachers died. 
nine colors. These are just so sad. And I looked at the number one, like the, the tolls. It, it's horrible. But this is the story and I'm glad I could share it a bit more and I hope you enjoy the little sights. It's very peaceful there. If you're near the area, I suggest stopping by. Say hello to, to, to the stones. Say hello to the children. Say sorry. This happened. I did. Read the information on the signs. Curse Andrew's name. It's very peaceful. No one's really there. Uh, hopefully I didn't break any rules. I don't think I did. There was a park. There was benches. Besides the point. And I've started the research for the next case. And fortunately not as heavy. There's still death. But it's only one. I know that's not good either way. But at least it's not 45. 46. I think he should be included personally. Most children his age wouldn't be dying from that. Naturally. Well, see you guys next time and let me know what you think.